All right, it's been a really long time since I've given this distribution any coverage on my show. As a matter of fact, I think the last time we did anything with this was episode 200, where I showed you how you could go on their website and make a spin. And of course, I'm speaking about OpenSUSE. They have just released 13.1. And let me tell you what, kids, I think we found a winner here. As you'll find out right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. <laughs> OpenSUSE comes in two flavors. You may select GNOME or KDE. Now, last time I gave this distribution coverage on my show, we used the GNOME desktop, so I figured this time it would only be fair if I covered KDE. The one thing that really, really sparked my interest was when I first loaded this image into the virtual machine, the attention, the detail that went into everything from the bootloader to the installation process, beautifully put together, um, very appealing to the eye, even friendly for the newcomer. And that is one of the big focuses on my show, is covering distributions that do have that level of user friendliness. Another thing that really tripped my trigger on this one was after the install process was completed, you get this desktop that you see here, and it completely worked everything out of the box. I did not have to install any virtual box drivers or anything. It just worked. And you know, I always say this time and time again, you know, if you can't get a distribution running properly in a virtual environment, why should I trust this on actual hardware? I ran Manharo for a few months in a virtual machine before installing it on my system, and I'm glad that I did. Well, I'll tell you what, kids, I think I found a keeper here. And so, uh, as you'll see on this desktop, this I did a few minor changes to the desktop, the default desktop, because I'm actually gonna keep this. Uh, what I will be doing is I will be installing the Tumbleweed repository. Now, what you're looking at here presently is their default setup, but they do have an option to allow you to enable the Tumbleweed repositories, and there's a link in the show notes with instructions on how to do that, which will allow you to turn this into a rolling release distribution, and you'll always be getting stable packages. Okay, well, let's have a look and see what you get here. This is running the latest and greatest KDE 4.11. If you look at the lower right corner of the screen, you have quick access to uh, an activities button to the right of the clock. Then you have a clock, your network, your volume control, and a clipboard manager. On the upper right of the screen, you'll see there's a desktop uh, button here that allows you to add widgets, activities, and that sort of thing. You have your desktop folder here. I resized it just for cosmetic reasons, but uh, you can easily resize this by pressing this button here, and you can, you know, change its dimensions and that sort of thing. If that's something you like. Personally, I don't like anything on my desktop. Okay, and then uh, down to the bottom left here, uh, quick launch to Dolphin. You get the Firefox web browser. Two desktops to switch from. They're stacked, one on top of the other. And then another button here, which allows you to do the same thing, except you have a panel that comes up out of the taskbar. All right, and then, of course, you get the standard launcher, which I really don't care for. I don't like its appearance. Uh, but the thing is, you know, you can't change that. And I think there are other applications that are available out there. I'm just going to right-click on this and uh, switch this to classic style menu so that I can go over uh, some of the software that you get with this. Now, something I'd like to note, when I installed this as default, uh, it had a lighter colored theme uh, on the panels and the windows but not on the taskbar. But I did find that by going into the KDE settings, I was able to find a theme that matches this beautifully. So that's very nice indeed. Okay, so in education, you get Marble. And when I open this, kids, this program is OpenGL, 3D Globe, that sort of thing, educational. But I figured I'd test it just to see if OpenGL was working out of the box. And amazingly enough, it did. And without any stuttering or any problems, gotta love it. You get a number of games included with this, some board games, 
uh, Mahjong and Reversi uh, in the puzzle. You get K-Mind, Sudoku, no clue. And then K-Patience for uh, a bunch of little card games in here, and I really like how they beefed up the graphics on them. Okay, uh, in graphics for image editing, you get the GIMP, uh, the uh, Huggin patches, and the LibreOffice Draw and Photography. You get Digicam. You know what, kids? Digicam's an awesome program for managing your photos. Uh, now, I don't use it myself. My mom swears by it. She uses it all the time. You get a DNG image converter. Uh, you also get uh, exposure blending, a panorama. Great for stitching images. So if you uh, have a digital camera on a tripod and you're taking images, you can stitch images together. I used to do that when I made virtual tour websites and i take these panoramas. All right, uh, you get uh, photo layouts and uh, show photo. You can acquire images on this thing. You get Gwenview, which is the KDE image viewer. LibreOffice draws listed again. Of course, in the internet, in chat, you get Shoquak uh, Conversation, which is their IRC client, and Copeat. In email, you get uh, Kmail, Firefox, and Conqueror. You get a feed reader, and then, of course, you get a BitTorrent client. In multimedia, uh, you get Amarok, and what the AMZ downloader is, I haven't a clue. You get the K3B, which happens to be the best premier uh, disc burning utility. It'll even rip your DVDs if you have all the plugins and everything installed on it. Caffeine for your media player, which is also awesome, awesome software. K-Mix, and then the uh, KS CD, which is a CD player. <laughs> okay, you get the full LibreOffice suite along with a number of uh, KDE applications with the inclusion of Ocular for viewing your documents. All the system tools you need to get the most out of this system is located here. Okay, you've got a number of other utilities included with this. Some accessibility options, archiving tools with uh, backup utilities, some desktop tools. Uh, you got your text editors, your security tools, and then of course you get the KCALC Scientific Calculator. You can configure your desktop by clicking here. And this opens up the actual uh, KDE control center. And then from here, you can do a lot of things to tweak your system. Okay, you have uh, your application appearance here. Uh, you can change uh, how, you know, everything appears on here. So if you want to go with that Windows 95 look, you could do that if you want to. You can change your colors. And this is where I went, actually, when I decided to go from the default OpenSUSE, I went to the OpenSUSE dark alternate effect and applied it, and that's what made it match the desktop here. So, looks like you got some really cool themes from here, and I'm going to be nicking one or two of these themes to use on my Manharo desktop. Yeah! But at any rate, uh, you can go back into your overview. So, you have a lot of options that you can configure here, and I mean, it would take me it would take me about 15 episodes to go over everything that these things can do. There's some other things. Let me go ahead and change this back to the uh, application launcher style because it would be easier for me to find these things. Here, if you go into computer here, okay, you have some other options. You have YAST, which is yet another setup tool, which will allow you to configure and tweak your system settings. You get YAST 2 for installing and removing software. It's very similar in appearance to the Synaptic Package Manager. So for those of you coming over from a Debian-based distribution, you would be able to use this. You also get the K-Info Center and Run Command. And for those of you who want an easier solution for installing software, you have this nifty little tool included called Apper. And let's say you want to follow my KDN Live videos. Well, just click on Multimedia here. All right, and you can just scroll down till you find uh, KDN Live. It's in here. They've got a huge repository of things in here. Okay, you press on it. It gives you a description, and then there is an install button that you can click for easy installation. How cool is that? This looks like an amazing distribution that Newcomers would easily be able to digest, especially if you're using the KDE desktop. I like how it's put together. I like the options that this comes included with. This is a comprehensive, complete desktop that any Linux user could be able to dig their hands into. 
So all I've got to say on this is good job, SUSE team. I'm keeping my copy in my virtual machine, and I'm going to run this for a while. And if uh, updates don't break the system after I uh, use the tumbleweed, because yes, yeah, so I want to use tumbleweed, I want to make this rolling. Uh, if this does a really nice job, then I may just install this on that spare computer that I have in the household. Okay, well that's all I have on this distribution. As a reminder, please support the show hosts you enjoy the most by disabling your ad blockers or shouting them some coins. Also, be sure to check out my website I just updated, www.cupoflinux.com. Peace out! Mm -hmm.